So, chemical reaction rates can be much faster with microwaves. The formation of polymers provides practical examples of surprising microwave advantages. To be honest, most of my experience with microwaves is with polymers because of industrial interest. Microwaves can lower polymerization temperatures. That is counter to the almost 100 years of polymer science. If there's one thing to take away from these videos, that's it. Lower temperatures. Lowered temperatures will lower internal material stresses and stresses between different materials. There will also be an example of a chemical reaction that actually produces different products with microwave heating. For an example of a liquid phase chemical reaction without the complication of solvents, we look at the very important field of polymerization. Of course, there are many plastics used in modern life, as well as adhesives between similar and different materials, and protective coatings. Polymer composites are often lighter, stronger, and more flexible than metals. Most of life is based on biological polymers. The most common polymer type is the thermoset, which combines many small molecules into a large complex arrangement. When small resin molecules are polymerized, connections are formed as both longer chains and crosslinks between those chains. As soon as a chain is formed that reaches from one side of the material to the other, a gel is formed, as shown in yellow. This gel is rigid, so further reactions require higher temperatures to allow all the unreacted monomers to connect to that backbone. Longer reaction times will help, but without higher temperatures, it can take many hours or even weeks. Since microwaves rotate even the longest chains, the reaction can continue without such a high temperature being necessary. A completely reacted polymer is produced even while being cured without using a higher temperature. An unexpected result was that with microwaves, more long chains were produced compared to crosslinking prior to that gel point. With standard heating, the ratio is about equal. This low temperature curing also results in a much lower stress level in the final polymer, as we'll see. Let's dive a little deeper into the sources of stress created during polymerization reactions. The first stress is chemical shrinkage from many unconnected molecules forming highly connected and tangled molecules. The second and larger shrinkage stress in yellow occurs during cooling from the cure temperature down to room temperature. In this example, the lowering of the cure temperature from 180C to 120C significantly reduces both sources of stress. Unfortunately, by lowering the temperature using normal curing methods, the amount of time to complete the reaction increases almost exponentially. Of course, there's still another source of stress, that is mechanical rather than chemical. When combinations of metals, minerals, and plastics are assembled, still another form of stress is created between those different materials. This stress becomes an even bigger problem as the materials are assembled and heated during processing. The processing temperatures are color-coded and shown on the right. Each material has a coefficient of thermal expansion, CTE, that is wildly different between some of these material types. As process temperatures rise, materials stretch or elongate at different rates and upon cooling can fracture and break. Clearly, the lowest possible process temperatures will create the least mismatch between the thermal properties of these materials. Today's manufacturers are pushing very hard to reduce all process temperatures to lower all of these stresses 
and increase the reliability of final products. This chart shows several thermoset materials with their standard oven cure temperatures. Here are recently published cure temperatures for these same materials, but polymerized with microwave heating at lower temperatures. All of this data represents complete, not partial polymerization, and yet the microwave cures were actually much faster than the oven cures above. Thermoplastics are long chain molecules that change from a liquid resin to a rigid polymer without cross-linking between the chains. You can imagine the process being like going from loose cooked spaghetti to rigid uncooked spaghetti backwards. Thermoplastics are often used as protective coatings with very high thermal stability and chemical resistance. This graph shows examples of commercial thermoplastics used in the electronics industry. Once again, these coatings are all fully polymerized with microwaves at these much lower temperatures. If you're familiar with thermoplastic resins, you know they come dissolved in a solvent, which is boiled off partly before and partly during polymerization. You've probably guessed that those solvents are also boiled off at lower temperatures with microwaves. For example, N-methyl pyrrolidone's boiling point of 203 C drops to 140 C. One more surprise coming in part four.